Hola a todos, buenas tardes. Eh, mi nombre es Carlos Agami y estamos aquí en un episodio más de Retail Stories. Eh, el objetivo de este episodio es buscar ayudar a toda la industria, a todas las personas involucradas en ventas, en las empresas, en las organizaciones, a enfrentar la incertidumbre que está causando toda la crisis que estamos viviendo con el COVID-19. Eh, en esta ocasión tengo el gran honor y el gran orgullo de eh, presentarles, de invitar a, eh, a mi maestro, a un gran guía para mí, Marcus James. Marcus eh, es una persona que ha tenido una gran trascendencia en mi vida, que me costaría trabajo definirlo eh, porque no, no, no tiene ninguna etiqueta. Sin embargo, él, él, él hace mucho de eh, coaching, se podría entender, pero también por otro lado, eh, eh, una comprensión a un nivel personal y energético muy importante en otra persona. Y lo más importante es que Marcus tiene un deseo de servir increíble. Eh, Marcus es de Irlanda eh, y Marcus, va, vamos, vamos a conversar acerca de cómo enfrentar esta incertidumbre. ¿Qué, es, ¿Qué significa esto que está pasando? ¿Cómo enfrentarlo? ¿Y eh, cómo hacer para que nuestra, nuestra presencia, nuestra existencia, tenga un impacto positivo en las personas en Estados So, Marcos, thank you very much for, be, for being here. It's my pleasure. It's, I'm really proud of having you uh, on board right now. And uh, I welcome you. So, thank you very much. No, es un placer. Gracias a ti, Carlos. Y lo sé, este momento, este interview es en inglés. Gracias por este, eh? So, it's nice to be here. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm very proud and happy to be here with you, too. I think it's a very important moment, a very important time for a lot of people watching this to try and grasp what's really happening and what can we do to manage this in some way. Okay, so, so thank you, brother. So let's, let, let's begin. The, the first thing uh, I want to ask you is, what does all this mean? What, 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 does, it, what does this mean? What, what you know, uh, the stock market falling down completely, people not going to the stores right now, uh, our working uh, habits being transformed. What does it mean? Wow. Well, I'm going to tell you, man, the very first thing it means is what you decided it means. You have to give it a meaning. Like, there is no doubt, there is no question that the world is changing. There is no doubt, there is no question that transition is happening. We are realizing something we didn't know a week ago. Imagine, we're realizing things today we didn't know yesterday. So what does that mean? Well, what does it mean to you? If I have 10 people in this room and I'm speaking to 10 of them, it will mean similar things to all 10, but something very unique to each of the 10. Essentially, it means that we are experiencing transition and change, which is a part of life. We are experiencing the unknown and the uncertainty, which is a part of life. And we are experiencing a moment of invitation to challenge ourselves to become the greatest version of who we are, the greatest vision of who we can be. This is a moment of opportunity. It's not a bad thing. It may be for some people bringing suffering and challenge, but in the bigger picture, this is an opportunity. Okay, so how do we frame it? If I'm a CEO or I'm the owner of a business and suddenly my business could be collapsing because I'm not having any customers right now, uh, but I'm still paying the payroll, I'm still paying the rent, I'm still pay paying for uh, all the utilities. How do I frame this and how do I actually make this an opportunity way beyond you know, the 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 inspirational talk. How do I actually transform my mindset and my actions to face this? Well, for some people, it may be too late. If it's not too late for you, you will know because you'll have something inside you that is determined not to allow this to take you down. For some people, they're already caught up in that trap of what matters most is fixing the problem that is out there. The reality is the problem is within here. So how do you fix it? How do you transform your mind? You have to put your attention where you need your attention to be. If you begin with your belief system, you're very possibly going to get, get caught up in, in understanding this to be something that is outside of your control. So the first thing you have to do is you have to ask, what is the reality I want to experience? What is I want my day to be considering this external world that is changing around me? In order to experience that reality, how must I behave? In order to behave that way, how must I feel? To feel that way, what is the attitude I must have? 
and to have that attitude, what must I start believing now and what must I stop believing? So it's about introspection. It, there's no point in picking up the phone and panicking and asking people, what do we do? This is very much about you individually, Carlos, going into yourself and asking, who am I? In the light of what is happening, what do I want? And what is the power I have to make that change happen? It's a mindset. It's nothing more than a mindset. And you act out of the mindset and the world around you becomes an external expression of your internal reality. And I thank you. Uh, right now, you know, on the streets and in people's minds, panic is the norm, you know? Uh, people are concerned and they are actually, and I tell you because I did it myself, are thinking of all the consequences 10 steps ahead of this situation. Uh, and, and, and suddenly you're telling me to go back inside and to, and to think of what do I want it to be for me? What do I want to be and go back from there and try to, 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 to understand what do I need to change to actually achieve that? How do I make that transition from uh, you know, panic from the external world into uh, an introspection into my internal world and into my thoughts and into my feelings without the, 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 the noise from the outside? Well, this is why earlier I said for some people it might be too late. What you're asking for, Carlos, is the, the combination or the equation or the, the formula to switch from a panic into peace. Well, it's like being in the ocean and drowning. You just make a decision to go calm or you drown. There is no secret recipe here now. This is a time to grow up, put on the big boy pants, put on the big girl pants, take a very big deep breath and say, okay, I'm going to let go of all of the things that are worrying me. If I put my attention there, I'm going to end up there with my attention. For wherever I put my mind's attention, my energy flows and I go. So if I am in a situation where I'm even asking the question you're asking, I'm in the wrong state of mind. How do I go from here to there? Suggest that there, that mindset is somewhere that is not here. You make the decision now, in this moment, to say, okay, I am not going to panic. I'm going to refuse to panic. I'm going to create a perspective that gives me opportunity, possibility, and potentiality. I'm going to breathe and connect with my body. I'm going to eat good. I'm going to sleep good, which is something that's making me laugh right now. I just spent probably 30 of the last 48 hours on interviews like this and conference calls all around the world because everybody's asking the same thing. What's going on? What do we do? What's going on, Carlos, is the same as what goes on every day. But today, it's relevant to everybody. You put on your news two or three weeks ago, and you will see the news about an earthquake somewhere. In 2017, Europe were watching the news about an earthquake in Mexico. But they weren't panicked because it wasn't touching them. Television and media don't allow us to touch the experience. Now we are all feeling this. And the only thing you can do is realize this is happening. It's not something that's going to happen. Whether this is real or not real, some people don't know. Whether it was done by man or God, some people don't know. It's irrelevant. It has nothing to do with anything. Absolutely irrelevant. What's relevant is that you are in this moment and I am in this moment. And what we choose to do with this very instant is going to determine the experience we have tomorrow. Because tomorrow is an extension of this moment. And who I am now is who I am tomorrow. As you know, one of the marks, one of the brands that I work on with my own business is you are your business. You are your attitude. You are your feeling. You are your behavior. And you are your reality. You are your panic. You are your depression. You are your positivity. You are your excitement. You choose. And this is very much a time I've mentioned already where it's about growing up and being mature. This is happening. We have to take responsibility. And it's a beautiful something that's happening, albeit that many will struggle and many will suffer and many will go through pain. It's a beautiful thing that is happening in the greater picture in, 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 in La Pintura Mas Grande. Esta cosa es una cosa increíble because it's full of opportunity. It's full of possibility. It's full of me going in to discover what it is that I've truly got within me, finding what that is and taking it out so I can make this 
a growth and an evolution, not a depletion and a depression. Well, you know, you know that part of what I try to, to communicate, part of what I, have, what I have right now in my shirt is that we are here, we're here to serve. That people, people uh, we come to the, the, the world to serve other people. And that's what gives us the most uh, uh, satisfaction. That's what, that, what, that's what gives us a sense of contribution. That's our mission, in my point of view. Now, in my opinion, this is a moment to serve. This is a moment to give to others what they actually need and to go out of ourselves to uh, provide for others what they need. Uh, I believe right now for, for people in companies, there are basically uh, three main groups of people who need, who need their service. First of all, their families who need their service, who need, who need their attention, their presence, and their example. Also, their employees, the people who are working for them that are under the same or even more uncertainty that they are, and finally, their customers. Yeah. What would be your recommendations on how to serve these people right now? Positivity, love, appreciation, attitude that shows potentiality, complete refusal, dogmatic refusal to get sucked into the drama. And how we serve each other is by we give what we have to give. We reach to the world with what it is we believe we have in here, we give it attention. Sometimes we just have to listen to somebody. Right now, a lot of people are panicking because they don't know what the answer is, but they're not going introspective to ask, well, what is my real question? What am I really looking for? So ask people questions, powerful questions. Try not to tell people so much. What do you need? How are you feeling? Have you ever had a moment that was out of your control before? How did you deal with it? How did you get through it? People might say, no, I've never had anything like this. I didn't ask you, did you have anything like this? I asked, have you ever had a moment that was out of your control before? You see, this is just an amplification of every other moment in life. And it's very dramatic because it has officiality behind it, because it's all the world is talking about. It's kind of interesting. I've been hearing about this for months. I've been helping people for weeks now in relation to this. You know, I haven't yet spoken to anybody who has caught the virus. I know they're there because people are telling me they're there. But I haven't met anybody. So it's kind of curious that we're living in a reality that is and equally is not at the same time. And you have to choose the side of that coin that you, that you set up your camp. You have to choose whether or not you are going to get entangled in this or whether or not you're going to use it as an opportunity. Now, if what you want in the world, Carlos, if everything that you want is here, if everything that you do not want is here, this is where your attention goes. Everything you speak, everything you feel, everything you express, everywhere you go, everyone you meet, you do it in the frequency of everything that is in this world that you want. Peace, tranquility, solutions, a way forward, a way to connect, a way to understand. You look at all of that and you ask the appropriate questions of yourself. And that's the only way you can serve somebody else. Ask them, what do you need? ¿Qué necesitas en este momento? ¿Cuál es este problema para ti? Specifically, what is this for you? What is this doing to you? Everybody will deal with this differently. Some people are afraid for their health. Some people are afraid for their money. Some people are afraid for their families. Some people are afraid for the fact that they have no control. Most people are afraid because they have no control. So let go of the need to control. There's a beautiful, I can't remember what book, I think it's a book of Joseph Campbell, who once mentioned about falling in life because life is really this non-stop fall from one reality to the next. You know? Make the fall a voluntary reality. Choose to say, okay, I'm going to fall. I'm going to go with the wind on this. Stop fighting it. There is no drama except for the one who creates the drama. Perspective creates reality, Carlos. Create your perspective. And if you think you cannot create your perspective, if you think you don't have the perspective to create, well, you start there. Create a perspective about that. If you think you don't know what it is you need to do, start asking the question there. What would feel right? What would make me feel better in this moment? Who can I call? What can I ask? 
what can I eat, where can I go, in order to settle myself a little bit to change the energy that I'm playing with. And in relation to organizations and companies, there's a very practical something. And the practical something is found in the world of organization development. The idea of organization development is to understand your core goals and values, the policies and procedures by which you do business, the systems you use to create the reality where the policies and procedures get instilled, the people and the talent you use to enact the systems into place, and it goes on into strategy, structure, and culture. And when you understand all of those bubbles in the OD world, you have within you all of the answers you need to deal with even the things that are outside of your control. Right now, organizations are realizing that they've been cutting corners. They're not developed or trained enough to cope with the unknown. But every day they'll tell you, we need to be ready for the unknown. So accept responsibility. We got cut short on this. We're not ready. We don't know what this is. Our people are not trained. Our HR people are probably, are in most cases, human resource people are more human resource management than they are human resource development. This is the moment where you develop your human resource people. They're going to have to reach all over their cities to find their employees in their homes and manage to maintain a connection of the collective consciousness of the organization. So HR people now have to put down the pens and put down the legal documents. And instead of spending time looking at the legal issues of what can get you sued and, and what can get you put into court and what can't, they got to stop and say, how do we motivate our people? How do we inspire our people? How do we give our people vision? How do we give them love? How do we give them hope? How do we give them compassion? How do we give them understanding? This is not the language of the corporate world, my friend. This is the language of the human. This is the soul's journey. And this has always been a part of organization, but it has been ignored because people like you and me who go in to serve, who teach about motivation and empowerment and we develop coaches and we train in coaching and we offer this upskilling in these things, many people don't understand that they are in fact the hard skills, but they consider them the soft skills. You know, it's now recommended in the world that instead of doing an MBA, you do a PhD or a high-end master's in philosophy. The world is changing, guys. At a very practical level, this is happening in the big picture of life. This is a cleansing. This is going to get rid of a lot of stuff the world doesn't need anymore. A lot of business that make it that a lot of businesses that make their money on on low-end marketing for the purpose of keeping the stupidity of man attached to the product. They're gone. And, and it's time to realize people are panicking. We're in Mexico right now, and I know what's going on in Mexico because I'm here. People are panicking because they think there's two or three or four weeks of a challenge ahead. There's not. There's three to four months minimum before business gets back on its feet. Because business today hasn't even fallen down. We're just the way it's beginning to. So in Ireland, they have announced many things that are showing that this is a long-term job for the next three to four months at least. So this is an entire reinvention. It's time to ask the big questions, the hard questions, the serious questions, sharp, and excuse my language, but with no bullshit required. This is about being straight. What matters most to me? And in the next number of months, people are going to be sitting at home with their families. And they're going to realize this is what matters most. But I've lost it. I've taken my eye off the ball. And I don't know how to be at home for 24, 48, 72 hours with my family without a distraction. And we're going to realize that what has been so important to most of us are profit margins, sales, sales values, training and development, building homes, buying cars. Do you know the amount of people that we know in this city? that have enormous standards of living, but they have to work hard to maintain it. And now that opportunity is seizing because the world is stopping. And those people are under pressure, not because of a virus. They're under pressure because of their attachment to expensive things that need work to continue the way it is so life can be maintained in their standard. Many people are going to lose that now, guys. That's the reality. This is not an idea that we can all breathe and get through this together happy, like pink fluffy clouds in the field. We can get through this together and happy, 
but with a lot of loss. Like, it's, we're okay, man. We're lucky. We are resourced. The streets around here are filled with people who have no resources. One of the first things we have to do is look to those who don't have what we have and begin to reach out and support them and help them. And the energy of that will come back to us, not by some magical, mystical, out of the cloud something. The energy will come back simply because we are creating within ourselves an importance in the frequency of reaching into the lives of others and helping them. This is a big, big picture and it's not a bad thing. But many are going to hurt and many are going to suffer and struggle. Our job is to serve in such a way that we bring peace and hope. And we help people realize it's okay to let go of some things. Now you need to ask where my attention needs to be and what I'm going to come through this with. For you and me, it's okay. I'm not going to lose anything here. You're not going to lose anything. We have our work done. We just spent years and years going through our own personal journey to discover who we are and what matters most. We can live happily in a little room with a, with a bouncing ball. Most people can't. And that's why this is a, a very significant moment for people. You know, right now, Carlos, people are in, in a stage of kind of, you could call it a pre-grieving stage. People are in shock. They're in awe of realizing something's happening and I don't know what. And they're scared because the people that they give authority to in their life are telling them things that are scary. It is true that if you create the mindset necessary, you can get through this very easily. But to do that now, you need to make a life commitment. The mindset we're talking about is a way of life, not a nice idea. It's a way of life. You get up in the morning with ethics and integrity. You live a true life. Every step you take, you take it consciously. Every thought you have, you have it consciously. Every action you take with consciousness, which means you slow down your life in order to be aware of what you're doing and why. And right now, the gift in this, it's causing everybody to slow down. Do you know the amount of time I have in my life right now compared to what I did have? And I know, of course, I'm filling it again with other kinds of meetings. But for, for the last week, I realized there's a lot of time in the day. And I don't get to enjoy it so much because I go from Billy to Bob, from Mary to Margaret, trying to achieve a life consequence or a life result. And life is now saying to me, Marcus, you too. Sit down, relax, chill out, breathe in and ask what's important. Everything's changing. Everything. We're shutting the world down. It's unprecedented. You cannot think about the solution to this in the same way you thought about the solution to your business last week. I don't know what the meme is. I think it's an Einstein phrase. It goes around Facebook a lot. The definition of madness is trying to solve the same problem with the same mind that created it. And we are responsible for this. We are full responsible. This is our world. This is our moment. This is our expression. We have been asking as a collective consciousness, we have been asking for years, life, give me a break. Stop this, change this, let's bring in more humanity, more values, more love, more compassion. You know the old saying, my friend, be careful what you wish for. We are now sitting in our own caca. We've made this. We need to celebrate it. We are where we've asked to be because we are deep down, we are aware that we are challenging ourselves to overcome everything. This is only a problem for those who say it's a problem. And if you are completely attached to money and your business is collapsing, you've got a big problem. And there ain't no solution for you this week or next week. Those who are attached to material wealth and they don't have access to themselves or they don't have a willingness now to become a part of their own self, they've got a problem, Carlos. That's the reality. If you want to solve this and you're afraid, you've got to say, okay, I'm reaching out to whoever or whatever can help you. Like right now, people, I'm assuming people are calling you all day saying, Carlos, are you the way? Necesito tu ayuda, necesito tu apoyo, porque no sé cuál es la historia, cuál es la problema, cómo es posible. People are panicked. They're panicked. So you need to say to the world, I am here to serve you, and the way I serve you is by helping you learn how you serve yourself. But you need to realize 
it's time to take a big, deep breath and make some big, big decisions. There's a short just, just to finish up, just to finish up, give me uh, a couple of recommendations to finish up. What would you recommend people who are listening to us? The first thing, what is the reality I want to experience? What is the experience I want to be my reality? What do I want this day to be? In order for that to happen, how must I behave? In order to behave that way, how must I feel? To feel that way, what is the attitude I need to switch on? And to switch on that attitude, where do I put my attention? On what do I believe? On what do I stop believing? You know, a belief is only a statement. That's all. If you don't like it, you put a question mark at it, you turn it into a question, and then you let go of the belief. So they're the most basic steps you can take. When you get a chance and you get the time, it's good to sit down, close your eyes, silence the mind, and ask yourself, what am I feeling? What is the feeling I'm feeling? Who is inside me talking to me about how I am worried? Who is the warrior and who is the one that believes this is great and this is good and I can make it good? Get to know yourself. In terms of your business, you need to sit down and you need to ask what can I do to make this different in regards to my business? In some way, some things have to get paid, some things don't. Some things have to move, some things don't. Everybody's going to begin to think the same way, Carlos. The world is going to stop for a while. It's not stopping for death to happen. It's stopping for life to happen. But life only ever comes out of the nothing. Life only ever comes out of the silence, what we might call death. So acknowledging and appreciating that we're going to experience and we're experiencing death and allow it, don't be afraid of it. Death of life as we know it, death of our attitude, death of our opinion, death of what we think and we know is right and wrong. We're going through change. You need to learn to die and keep on living. It's unprecedented. This is the moment, Carlos, you've got to speak to people of the philosophy. You've got to speak to people of their faith. And you've got to let people know that you've got the answer, but you have got the answer. I've only got the question to help you instill the answer. But you've got to stand up and do it. This is everyone collectively being in it to find their own individual power, only to give it to the person next to you. This is an awakening. This is a consciousness shift. This is the promise of all of the prophets. This is the promise of all of the gods. This is the promise of all of the philosophers. This is the promise of all of the poets. This is the moment where the doors revolve, where the shifting happens in such a way that we let out the spirit that is within and we no longer worry about this. This, my friend, is just the suit that we wear in order to navigate this planet called Earth. It's time for the good news. It's time for the great news. It's time to give people the power to help themselves and by doing that, let them know that they can then do that for somebody else. This is for people like you and me and all of our network who are connected to. We become the light givers, the light bearers. We become those with the good news. Business is an external expression of your internal reality. You only have a problem in your business today because you don't know how to reinvent. Come on. Of course you know how to reinvent. You made the business happen in the first place. You're in your HR job, your CEO job, your director job, your manager job. You're in the cleaning job you're in. You're sweeping the streets, you're serving in the shop because you've got what it takes to invent and reinvent to do what is needed. No need for fear, my friend. Celebrate it, but give the prayer, give the compassion, give the kindness to the world for those who are struggling and suffering. And I'm going to tell you why. Many people, even if they don't get the virus, will be sick from this because psychologically and emotionally they're panicking. We are here to serve them, Carlos, and they are here to serve us. I'll tell you why. There are people in the world who are taking the pain and the virus and the sickness and the worry, the stress and the strife so we don't have to. They're carrying our shit for us. In the bigger scheme of life, they are carrying that which is allowing the balance. They are serving us. So we need to realize that everybody's in this. It's time for love. Time to get the mind right and reinvent from a place of love, compassion, 
and begin to realize that the old technology is no longer valid. The old systems of government, they're no longer valid. They're dying. This is their death call. People are awakening. From this, we grew up in a whole new society, my friend. It's a new birth. And it's I, a I, 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 really, I really honor your words. I thank you. I believe uh, you're actually expressing your, your will to serve other people with, with all your, your ideas. I thank you very much. I hope this can actually uh, have a meaning at, little, at least for some, for some person listening to us. So I thank you very much and I wish you the best. It's my pleasure, my friend. And follow the soul's journey, not the role's journey. Follow what your insight says, my friend, and enjoy and reach out and help. Thank you.